We're going to go into HDR toning now. And let me explain what HDR toning is first of all, because there's a lot of mystery around HDR toning. HDR stands for high dynamic range. And we used to shoot everything with slides. And if you remember, shoot those of us who are old enough. Um, when you shot a slide, you had a very limited range from your highlights to your shadows. If you exposed for the highlights, your shadows would typically block up. Uh, when we went now to 16-bit DSLRs or 14-bit DSLRs, and you take a picture in camera raw, very often you have <coughs> wonderful detail that you can pull out of your shadows and your highlights and stuff. But then some bright people said, well, why not take that and shoot two stops under normal and two stops over on something like the Grand Canyon with you know thunder clouds and you want to get complete detail in the clouds and complete detail down in the deepest shadows of the Grand Canyon. You can't do that with a single picture. So you take uh, two stops under to get the clouds all nice, normal for the mid-range tones, and then you go and shoot uh, two stops over to get all that detail out of the shadows and everything. And you put all of that into software, either Adobe or their other uh, third parties that will do it. And they look at your three pictures and they go, okay, you got detail there, detail there. And it puts together this monster image in 32 bits, mm -hmm. okay? What are you going to use 32 bits with? No printer will print it, but it's there. You've got everything from A to Z in 32 bits. The problem comes that when you want to do something with this, it has to go down to 16 bits or even, God forbid, 8 bits, okay? So if you're down in 8 bits from 32 bits, what do you think is going to happen to all your detail? It's going to turn into a pile of gray muck. So HDR toning was invented to micro-adjust all of the detail and the contrast in your image so that when you do reduce it down in bit depth, you have preserved a lot of your detail. That's what HDR toning was invented for. Was it invented for a bunch of astro people to come in and go, eh, 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 I got some detail in this little nebula, I'm going to bring it up and make it look really cool. And by the way, that's what uh, uh, PixInsight does. So now PixInsight has a rival because HDR can basically do the same thing. It can micro adjust the, the very finite and very fine detail that exists in your picture. So. Being that the case, the easiest way to show you how HDR works is actually on a picture of some clouds, because what's a cloud? It's a nebula, right? Um, and uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to open it up, image, adjustments, HDR toning. And the first thing you'll notice in HDR toning, boy, you know what? This, this could take a while, and I think our hour is up. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close this and go straight to a regular, regular picture. Okay, here's the horse head. And I'm going to show you this in black and white because it's easier to see what HDR toning is doing uh, in black and white than it is in color. I'm going to go image, adjustments, HDR toning. And when you do this, you'll notice immediately that HDR toning always blows out your your uh, your highlights. So <coughs> edge glow, you you know what? I'm just going to show you how this works because we don't have enough time to really explain this. If you really want to know how to use HDR toning, <laughs> um, but if you see how this thing works you'll get sold on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust this edge glow right here is where you adjust the micro <coughs> contrast adjustments, okay? That's what edge glow basically does. And radius, I usually leave around 100, strength around 0.5. Those burned out highlights, I'm going to control them by m reducing my gamma, and down here they have a highlight slider. I'm going to move that to the left. You'll notice how all of a sudden my highlights cleaned up beautifully. The exposure I leave the same, I don't touch that. If I need to do an exposure change, I always use the curves down here at the bottom. So curves, anytime I want to change anything as far as contrast or density in Photoshop, I look for curves because curves isn't better than anything else. Now, the detail, 
is call this an amplifier. This is a multiplier of whatever you're doing up here. And I used to I say in my video, it's like uh, high pass filtering on steroids. Because as you slide this over, is when you get your effects from the HDR tone. Okay? Now, uh, the shadow is very cool. Shadow is like that uh, in, in Camera Raw, it's like the, the fill light, remember? What shadow does here is because your contrast is going up, shadow will fill in your shadows. Okay? So you can, you can I usually just bump, bump that up a little bit. And I wanted to show you something that's kind of fun and interesting. Okay. If you want to do a nice HDR, usually you want to have strengths maybe around there, somewhere in there, and your, your radius is like your unsharp mask. If you have the radius small, actually I'm going to bump this power up so you can really see it. Okay. If your radius is small, then it's going to go after all the super fine anomalies and detail in your picture. If the radius is big, it'll go after the bigger elements of your image. And a nice average between the two is somewhere like around 100. Okay, so you see all this phenomenal detail showing up down here. And it's up to you to decide how much you want to do this. But, for example, if you make this really small, like that, and go all the way up here like this. And I'm going to say, um, click OK. Oh boy. Oh, it didn't crash, all right. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to do a duplicate layer, go OK. I'm going to go to filter, other. High pass. I'm going to high pass an HDR for the ultimate in atomic bomb explosion. <laughs> All right, and we're going to even pick the most. Uh, we'll use uh, overlay. Okay. Anybody want to guess what this looks like? It looks like bad Pix Insight. Because you know what, and I'm not knocking Pix Insight. It's a fantastic program, but it's very easy to abuse Pix Insight just as it's easy to abuse HDR toning. And you'll see images out there posted that have this effect, okay? And the reason why this is happening is because you are over amplifying these microscopic differences that exist in your picture. You don't want to go this far. The reason I'm showing you this is you do not want to go this far. Even though it's fun, you don't want to, you don't want to go this far because your picture doesn't look natural anymore. It looks like you mess with it too much. Okay, so you have to have a modicum of judgment when you use these very powerful tools.